Uh, hi everybody, I hope you enjoyed the tea slash coffee break. Uh, Kenneth and James are both Kenyans joining us, which is awesome, having people from other African countries. Um, they're both uh, Google Cloud developer experts, which means they're involved with mentoring and contributing to the community for Google Cloud, which is also really awesome. Um, Kenneth will be speaking first, and then they like sharing the five tag teaming. Uh, Kenneth stays in France at the moment, working for a Kenyan company uh, as CTO and co-founder. Yeah, cool. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, uh, yeah, cool. Um, so, my name is, uh, so, okay. So we're gonna be talking about how you can deploy uh, Django apps on Google App Engine Flexible Environment. Um, previously, it wasn't that easy to deploy um, Django application with the <laughs> Google App Engine standard environment, but this is something that came about and um, I feel like this is something that we're gonna talk about with James and see how you can leverage on this to build apps that scale. Um, sorry. Okay, so just a little about myself. Uh, thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is uh, Kenneth Kimenjui. Um, I'm a Google Cloud developer expert. Uh, professionally, I'm a software engineer and also a, a CTO at a startup called Infinity Space. Uh, it's based in France. Uh, that's where I'm currently based. I just relocated there. Um, and we're working on some mobile money stuff. Previously, I was doing uh, consulting at iHealth Consulting. And uh, I do a lot of Python, a uh, little DevOps stuff. And uh, last year, I joined the Google Developer Expert program. Um, so I'll just call James so that I can do an intro himself a bit. Uh, my name is James Moy. Uh, I'm also from Nairobi. I work as a consultant. I do a lot of stuff in Django and Python as well. We have an organization in Nairobi called I Have Consulting. I don't know if anyone has ever heard of I Have. I have, uh, we have some fans here, thank you. So uh, we have an organization called I Have Consulting, which is basically a group of consultants. And we build uh, software for local startups and sometimes uh, international clients as well. So today we will talk about uh, deploying your Django app to the Google App Engine Flexible Environment and show you some of the things you can take advantage of that are built into the service uh, that can be useful to you. So Kenneth, we'll start then I'll join him uh, as he continues. Okay. Wow, so I'm really, really excited to be here. I had applied and presented a paper in 2014, PyCon 2014, but I wasn't able to make it. Um, so I feel very happy to be here uh, and honored to be speaking to you guys two years later. My dreams are valid. Um, so I hope everyone is ready. Um, I normally run, um, I'll be transitioning to a pro athlete, pro marathon athlete next year. Um, so that's something I do on the side. Uh, and I'm not coding. Uh, this is kind of like the overview of what we're gonna be talking about. Um, so, you know, just a bit of introduction. Um, how many know about App Engine? Just raise your hand. Wow, <laughs> big crowd. How many do Django stuff, or no Django, or had Django, oh, it's the right crowd. Um, so, you know, we'll talk about um, the runtime, uh, a bit about setting up SQL, um, cloud storage, memcache, uh, deep down, a bit of PubSub if you're doing microservices stuff, and then stack driver in the login. Um, so let's go back in time. I mean, how develop, you know, how people used to develop apps before. So there was this guy who had a conversation yesterday was telling us about he's done 20 years in software engineering and the way he started his career, he was doing basically everything, you know, the data center, networking, setting up everything. So, you know, we've just been seeing a lot of transition and all these like this hipsterish thing that's now DevOps and everyone is, you know, we're transitioning. So before we had this kind of setup, and you know, engineers just code, 
when you are out skies and deploy, you know, we've seen this level of abstraction being made better and better over time. And it would take a long time to ship code, it was very tough. The people who are there who have over 10 years of experience know the pains that I did feel that so. But now, this is like a kind of modern day developer, uh, you know, there's a lot of tools that have been done, a lot of abstraction, lots of technology coming in. And you know, SAW is now the cloud, you know, cloud computing just came and everyone just went there and things are now more easier. So you just focus on the business case, uh, validate. So a lot of the hard work has already been done for you. But it also comes out to the, the um, when you're when you engineering, uh, engineering manager, CTO, and you're leading your team, it always comes with this um, situation where you're thinking about the time and the money, how, you know, to roll out, to ship builds, and all this stuff. So what do we do? Like, what's the solution? So Google App Engine, um, when it was being built, um, it was released about 2008, 2008, 2007. But um, I was fortunate to be at the GCP Max this year, and I had Eric Schmidt talk on the keynote about the history about this, which I didn't know. And he's talking about in the early 2000s, um, Google uh, really invested a lot in networking, security, infrastructure, and they had this thing that we call Google Key, which was uh, um, kind of like a network, uh, network operating system that made it easy for people to just come, developers and code and focus on the newest things. So engineers will join Google at the time uh, around 2000, early 2000, 2003, 2004, they will just come up and roll out something like Gmail or Google Maps or all this kind of stuff. But as we transition, we thought that let's change, let's make this, you know, let's be futuristic and release something, so they released Google App Engine. And if you look at App Engine in 2A, it was kind of like what they had uh, at Google 3, but now made open as a project. So we had guys who came in and rolled up on it. You know, we had Snapchat, Angry Birds, who came up, built stuff on it, and you know, they didn't have to focus on security, scaling, you know, no ops. So it was kind of easier for them to scale. So this is App Engine built on the data centers and Google's infrastructure as well as such, and all the other pro, uh, products. Yeah, but suites, you know, like all this stuff has been figured out, but what's the card? I mean, we had standard environments, which is good, but it didn't work in everyone's context. Maybe it worked for Google context, I mean, um, but maybe you had your own architecture and it didn't work out. So probably you had to work around those uh, standard environment that they had made. You couldn't add maybe some libraries, maybe you're doing some machine learning or this other thing. And you know, you're like fixed on how you, you had to make your architecture work like App Engine. So this was kind of, you know, and you also had like limited runtimes, you know, so you had only four runtimes. So what if you're building something on you know, Node.js or Scala or this other kind of stuff? So that, that means that you couldn't leverage on this. But yeah, Google listened, and you know, we have, you know, we've been seeing like a lot of changes uh, and new stuff coming in, and that's where the uh, flexible environment comes about, which is previously managed VMs. Um, so basically, what it is, it's a Google Cloud, Google Compute Engine instance um, that leverages on the Google App Engine infrastructure, uh, and you know, it has support for like all, most of the runtimes that we use, you know, Python, Java, and no JS, and the, the best feature that they have now is you can have custom runtimes that you can use. And now they have this new feature now, it used to be called mod modules, if you're an app engine developer, now it's called services, so it's actually very easy to interconnect um, your microservices in between. So there was a lot of problems with the standard environment where if you were doing stuff like this, like on sockets and all this stuff, it wasn't easy to interconnect, but now with the flexible environment, like all those problems are solved. Um, so, I mean, this is how um, it looked like, but if you're building a Django application, and previously, um, before they released Cloud SQL, that everyone knows how to get paid uh, with the data store and maybe Mongo, and you know, that's another conversation. Um, 
I mean, they at least they gave us promise, you know, which is a service. And I'm just going to show you like how to configure. Um, so what's Cloud SQL? It's basically an online um, instance of MySQL running on the Google Cloud. And you pay by the hour, you can use to connect to any of your services. So think about if you have very many services that are Django-based or Python-based running on your Google App Engine, you can actually just connect to them and communicate their data. You can easily roll out, um, handles multiple regions, you know. Um, so this is basically how you set it up, very simple. You go to the create a project. Um, after you create your project, go and create your MySQL instance uh, on this side. Um, they actually released second generation version of uh, Cloud SQL, which has like more features. You can go check it out. Um, and basically, describe how you want your uh, you want your MySQL instance to look like. So most of the time, uh, you want to really decouple your database uh, with your core services. So, I mean, if you're having a service that's really, really scaling up after, uh, you want to be in a situation where it's easy, it's easy for you to scale up your database and storage without affecting the call. So this is where this comes in. Now, in any Django project that you're doing, you have this, which is your, you have to define your production settings of PY, and you have the database. Um, so you have your engine, which you check, your name, your user, you know, you know the rest. Um, and basically, when you're starting in Java, you just start it like this. But if it's an app engine app, um, there are a couple of things that you need to look at. So one is the runtime. You know, you have to define which runtime is running on. And then there's this variable that's called VM where you select. And when you say VM is equal to true, that tells app engine that hey. Um, this is not going to be a, when you're deploying it, it's going to know that this is not actually a standard environment, but it's going to be a flexible environment that's coming in. And every Django app hits an entry point where you define your web server, you know, you have security calls, WSPI and all. And in this time, you can even go deeper and configure your runtime, which version of Python you want to run. So in this case, you're going to do Python 3. So on the standard environment, you could do Python 3. So on Plex, you can do that. And this is like a more deeper um, kind of app, app to download file that includes the environment variables, which you actually like mask out and prevent. So in this case, you have your settings module, your Cloud SQL, uh, password, and you know, all the credentials. So you put them in your configuration file. And basically, you go back to your production and just do an import to the import OS. And I'll just fix um, the environment variables, which is a very good practice when you're doing this. Um, so yeah, basically, once you do that, um, you've configured your database on production, on app, on app engine, flex, easily, without having the bottlenecks that we used to have before on the other Google app in the standard environment. So a couple of years ago, about in 2014, uh, 2012, 2011, uh, my friend James built an app on Google App Engine and it scaled to about uh, five, 5 million downloads uh, across the world. And without App Engine, he couldn't have been able to scale that fast and maintain his users. So to speak more about how he did it and some of the other services that he leveraged from, um, we'll just leave this here. So thank you. So um, as Kenneth has told you, uh, let me go back a little bit here. Uh, the most important <coughs> thing to know about App Engine Flex is uh, the runtime is customizable as opposed to the previous App Engine standard. So you can be able to specify a lot of things that uh, your app depends on, uh, and you're allowed to customize the way you're running for your application. So you can say, I want my runtime to be Python, and choose the version of Python you want. If you choose Python 2, it's going to be deployed in Python 2. If you choose Python 3, it's going to be deployed in Python 3. 
and you can add a lot of uh, the environment variables that your app is going to depend on. So the moment you say GCloud deploy, really deploy RPG applications, all these environment variables will be available in the runtime of your application. Uh, so he has talked to you about cloud storage, but we know a typical simple web application needs uh, the database. You need to store a uh, place to store your files, and as well you need to do some caching. Uh, sometimes you need to run some, some tasks in the background. So all these services you can do them without having to actually manage your hands yourself. Uh, thank you. Uh, so you can actually be able to configure uh, cloud storage. Uh, those of you who've used Amazon, you know we store all our files in Amazon S3. So with App Engine, you can store your files on uh, uh, Google Cloud Storage. Uh, and Google Cloud has a lot of services that you can use to suit your various needs. And this depends if is your data structured or is your data unstructured. But before you even choose a service to store your data, you need to make a decision which service do you need to use uh, to store that kind of data? And how do you do that? Uh, the first thing you need to ask yourself is your data structure. And if the answer is no, so you, you store your data on Google Cloud Storage. That could be uh, images, audio files, video files. But if your data is structured, then you go ahead and ask yourself, is it SQL or is it not SQL? If it's not SQL, uh, there are still other services that you can choose. Uh, for example, if it's just a uh, basic JSON structure data, you can choose to store it in Google Cloud Data Store. Uh, but if it's uh, high, you need high performance for your data, you can choose uh, Google Cloud Bigtable, which is basically uh, a high level data storage service, that is, which Google Cloud Data Store is built on. But if your data is structured, uh, and it's also SQL, <coughs> Uh, then you can go ahead and ask yourself, is it big data? Do you need data warehousing for your data? Then you can choose Google Cloud BigQuery, which is a data warehousing service. But if it's uh, SQL, uh, you don't need a lot of high performance, just go with Google Cloud SQL. Uh, one caveat to note with Cloud SQL is, uh, unlike in Amazon, whereby you can spin up Postgres instances, uh, I think you can also do Oracle and Microsoft. Uh, for now, you are only uh, given a MySQL instance uh, to choose from. Uh, but if your data is not structured, you need to store it in a service called Google Cloud Storage, which is a powerful uh, and easy to use uh, storage service. Uh, you can use it to store any sort of uh, non-structured data, media, uh, videos, photos. Uh, you can also store your JavaScript and CSS there. And you only have people who want to use, just uh, like in Amazon S3. Uh, so those are the fees per month for one GB. And how do you do it? The first thing you need to do is to create a bucket, uh, just like you would if you were storing on Amazon S3. Uh, uh, but if you want to do it, uh, you can do it on the console, but if you want to do it on the command line, there is this very important tool called Cloud SDK and you can easily install it, and this gives you access to a tool called GSDGO that can, you can use to be able to create and manage your budget. Uh, so you can use GSDGO to upload and download and delete objects from your cloud. You can use it to list the budget that you have, all the objects that you have, and many other things. Let me show you some examples. Um, for example, if I wanted to create a bucket for my command line, you just call ESUTL, I give it the uh, URL of the bucket I want to create, and that will be available for my project. I can be able to list all the files in the bucket. I can be able to copy files from my machine to the bucket, or to move an entire directory from my local storage. Uh, so it's a very important tool. But since we are talking about Python today, how do you upload files to cloud storage from your uh, Python project? So once you deploy your app to the Google Cloud Storage, uh, I mean, to the Google App Engine Flexible Environment, uh, the G Cloud Storage uh, library is available for you. So the first thing you do if you want to upload a file there is to um, 
The first thing you need to do is to import the Google Cloud uh, Storage Directory. Create a client to build on the project ID with the project you created once you started using App Engine. And basically, you go ahead and create a bucket. If you didn't have one, you can get, uh, if you had created one, you can get it. Uh, and then, basically, this is it. You upload your file, and the cloud storage will send a URL, which you can then uh, save your data in your database and reference it later. Uh, if you're running on Django, which is uh, what we were talking about today, you can use a tool we call Django Storages. Uh, Django Storages was initially created to be stored in files on Amazon S3, but the same way uh, we store Amazon uh, files on Amazon S3, we can use Django Storages to store our Django application files on cloud storage. So basically, you need to specify that uh, I'm storing, I'm using the DS. Uh, uh, bottom storage library. I specify my access key, my secret, and then the bucket name. And whenever you do Django, uh, manage your file collect static, all your files are going to be stored in your bucket, and you have access to uh, free to use, uh, almost free to use service for storing static files. But then again, your app sometimes will need catching. Uh, you don't, when you're running on App Engine, you don't need to manage uh, extra hardware for patching your application. There's a service called Cloud Main Patch, which is basically a distributed managed data patch that is available for your application. Uh, it can be used to speed up requests in your app, obviously. Uh, and uh, and the, an app can catch data query or an, any subsequent uh, request will be called from the main patch, uh, which is a service that you don't have to manage. We all know how hard it is to maintain uh, patch hardware. So you can set data to expire from the main patch at any time. Uh, there are two types of cloud main patch. Uh, one of them is shared main patch. This is available to all applications that deploy uh, to the app engine uh, flexible environment. But you can also request dedicated cache, which is what's going to be available just for your application. Uh, there are some limits for cloud caching, as opposed to if you were just managing the hardware yourself. Uh, the first one is the maximum catch data is one megabyte. Uh, and also a key cannot be larger than 250 bytes. Uh, and the total size for a single call cannot be more than 32 megabytes. So despite it being a managed service that you don't have to maintain, it has some limits that you should be aware of uh, if you want to use to implement it in your process. Uh, and also, a key obviously cannot contain an algorithm. Um, so for you to be able to use it, the first thing you need to do is go to the cloud console and be able to navigate to that cloud main patch section. And then you select the kind of patch that you want to use uh, for your project. You can select dedicated patch, you can select uh, shared patch if you want. Uh, so generally, uh, the patch pattern, as we all know, is the first thing that happens is an application will receive a query from a user. And then the application is going to check whether that data is available uh, or does it need to query that data from the database. Uh, if the data is in the main patch, you return that data to the user without having to use the DB. And uh, if the data is not in the main patch, uh, you obviously have to query it from the database, store it, and then uh, you return to the user and then restore the results in the main patch for future requests. So that is basically the catch pattern, that's the pseudo code. You get some data, you get some requests from the user, you check if the key is available in your patch, and if it's not, uh, if it's available, you return the data, and if it's not, uh, you basically query for it, and then you store that catch. Uh, if you store that data in the patch for subsequent requests. Um, so how do you use the cloud patch? Uh, you don't need to manage any hardware, as we say. All you need to do is access to the API, and you create unique keys for your data, and that is how you store them. Uh, so the first thing you do is uh, you say, main patch, I want to add this key, and this is the value for that key. And then you can get that key at any time that you want uh, for subsequent requests. So you can monitor your patch on the console as well. Uh, so what does monitoring your patch give you? It gives you uh, a lot of metrics such as uh, the service <coughs> level. It shows if your application is using the shared or the dedicated service. Uh, it will show you the hit ratio, how much 
the percentage of and the raw numbers of men participants in this. I uh, is also going to show you the items in the culture as well. Uh, and you can see how long the item has been dispatched, how uh, quickly or how often is the item being addressed by the user. Um, also, you can be able to see the total hash size. Uh, so there are some things you should be aware of if you want to use cloud methods. Number one, you should be able to uh, handle uh, the API failures gracefully. You don't need to expose that, uh, the failures to your users. Uh, you, can, you should try and use uh, batch capability as much as possible. The API has a batch capability that allows you to put as many keys as possible at once instead of making a lot of uh, requests when you're storing data. Uh, and also distribute the load across your memcache quickly. And instead of having one uh, key that, uh, that is handling a lot of uh, data, try and see if you can break it down and distribute uh, it across your key. That will help in scaling your application in the future. So uh, that's a lot about caching. But sometimes uh, when we write Django applications, we need to handle tasks in the background. Uh, sometimes some requests are long. We need to report back to the user but to run the, uh, the task in the background. There's a service called Cloud PubSub, uh, which is basically an asynchronous messaging service that can allow you to do tasks in the background, that can allow you to decouple your applications and allow them to communicate with each other dynamically. Uh, it uses the publisher subscriber model uh, in the sense that uh, you can be able to publish messages to the pub sub service and other parts of your application can be able to subscribe to those uh, messages. Uh, tasks are so are stored as topics. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, and it can, as I told you, it uses the push and pull model uh, to subscribe and publish messages. So you can use it in your web app to run any number of background tasks. You can use it to decouple your web, uh, web application into micro services and allow those services to communicate with each other by messaging instead of just visit HTTP calls. So the concepts for PubSub are, number one is a topic. And a topic is a named resource to which messages are sent by publishers. There is also a subscription whereby you can subscribe to a topic for particular messages that are being sent to that topic. Uh, and a message basically is the data that you send to a topic for other subscribers to that topic to be able to receive. So that's basically how it looks like. Uh, you have your publisher, your publisher creates a message and sends it to a topic. And any other part of your application that has subscribed to that topic is going to receive uh, that message. Um, you can also have many publishers publishing the same topic, many subscribers subscribing to the same topic. It's the same concept. So you can have maybe your, um, you know, you can have your order application publishing to the billing uh, application, uh, and any application that con that is connected to a particular topic will receive the messages instantly as they're sent to the topic. So the first thing you need to do in order to use PubSub uh, is to create a topic. And how do you create a topic? Once you deploy your app to the cloud. Uh, App Engine Flex, you get access to the PubSub library. And the first thing you need to do is create a PubSub client. Uh, and then you tell it, please create a topic for me. Of course, you'll give your topic a unique name. And then you call to it, and the topic will be created. Once you've created a topic, you can obviously then now start publishing messages to that topic. Uh, so, how do you send a message to a topic? The first thing you need to do is, uh, from your PubSub client, you tell it to get a particular topic. Topic names uh, will obviously be unique. You can uh, create them if you really want. And then you tell it, this is the data I want to publish this topic. And once you call topic uh, to publish, your data is going to be published uh, to that topic. Uh, you can list all the topics that are available in your application. Uh, just call uh, the client and ask it to, to list all the topics. Uh, you can delete topics, obviously. If topics are no longer in use, uh, you can delete them in the future. Just call topics.delete for each topic uh, that you've addressed. Uh, and then, once you've created topics, obviously, now you need other applications within your infrastructure to be able to subscribe to those topics. 
So how do you create a subscription? Once again, you just call the PubSub library, you create, uh, you call the particular topic that you want to subscribe to. Uh, and then you just say topic of subscription, the subscription name, and then you create it. And once you've created a subscription, uh, once you've created a subscription, uh, that particular section of your application can be able to receive uh, any message that is sent to that, uh, to that topic. So if you have any background tasks that you want to be running uh, when you have this new application, instead of the user waiting for the process to be complete, you can use this service. And it's a managed service. You don't have to uh, install it or manage anything. Uh, it comes available in a flexible environment. And I think in other uh, app engine services as well. So uh, there's also a service called Track Driver Debugger which is a feature that lets you inspect the state of your application uh, at any time. Uh, with Stack Driver Debugger, you don't have to also manage now uh, the logging system of your application. Uh, there's no need to manage the logs, uh, the logging statements, uh, and it doesn't slow down your application. Uh, so it's a service whereby you just, uh, once you deploy this cloud uh, app engine, just do a pip install of Gcloud Python debugger, and then inside your main function or inside your settings on the side, you can be able to attach the debugger and any statement, any print statement your application, all the requests that really are coming, you'll be able to see them on the stack driver uh, console. Uh, so I think uh, uh, because of time, uh, I can allow some questions to uh, Kenneth. Thank you. You don't have to worry about security when deploying your application. Is that um, security in terms of the infrastructure or security in terms of your application? And also, I checked, and it looks like um, registering CA certificates for your domains on App Engine is quite, quite a manual process. Um, so, the, are there any solutions to help with like fetching, verifying certificates for your domain and not just letting cook because that expires like every 90 days? So you have to go through that interface, it's kind of a mess. Um, so what kind of solutions are there? Um, are you looking into solutions to automate fetching of certificates from the CA for domains? Okay. Um, let me answer your last question and then maybe Jim can answer the security one. So for yeah, like let's encrypt, I mean document um, Things like last year, and then so I have like this friend who was an expert. So he actually built something that allows you to um, renew your SSL certificates automatically on App Engine. So there's actually like solutions uh, to cover that pain um, that, that actually came from the community, not from Google. So um, let's just chat after this, and I'll I'll share with you. Yeah, I can't remember the exact. Uh, in terms of security, I meant the security of the hardware uh, specifically. <coughs> the security of your application, obviously, you have to handle it yourself. So the, the managed database is the security patches in the new releases by SQL Dell. We did that for you in the cloud. It's not like you managing a server which runs your database. So that's the distinction of One question, I think most of the code, the computer code, was focused on the actual cloud environment. I wanted to find out uh, what support you have for your dev environment on your local machine. 
Um, so you can install the app engine environment on your local machine. You can simulate the entire environment on your machine uh, and do the testing for all these services on your, on your, tablet, on your local laptop. I mean. uh, the moment you test it, this cloud deploy, it just takes the, the start configuration and puts it in the cloud. So you can simulate the local environment by installing the app engine uh, framework on your machine. Uh, maybe I can add on that. So when you install, so previously you had to like go every time download uh, Google App Engine SDK for each of the things, but now they have G Cloud, so which is like a command line. It's like now the universal standard of interacting with uh, anything on Google Cloud platform. So once you install G Cloud, so go and install, they have something called components. So for instance, if you're using just Google App Engine, like, so you can just go and say gcloud install components, and then define if you want just App Engine for Python, for instance, and every time it keeps updating. Now, if you define your app.yaml and uh, your app.yaml and you set it as a py for your app, depending on which environment you're using, you just hit a small command line app like gcloud, uh, run it, and it will start the dev app server, those kinds of stuff that you normally you need to have to configure yourself, but right now it's like just one command and just can run it locally or in production. So if you say production, like deploy, you just deploy automatically. Yeah. 